Hey everyone, welcome to Duality Repair. This is my first Parasound unit. This is the HCA500 High Current Discrete Amplifier. I've already tested it and it's got at least one problem. It may have two or even more, so let's test it. And you can hear the relay engage, and actually this time it worked uh, a little bit better than last time. So I can hear the left channel right now. I'll let you listen for a second. So you can hear the music. That's from the left channel. The last time I didn't hear anything, I had to tap. Oh, there you go. I tapped on the cover just a few times and it engaged. I'm going to guess that that's the relay. And boy, that keeps going in and out. I look through the cover and I can see the relay. It looks very, very similar to the relay that I had to deal with on my last unit, the carver. And so I bet I'm going to have to clean that relay. But the other problem is if I turn the left channel down, can't really hear anything from the right. If I turn it all the way up and I turn my input source all the way up, oh, it sounds terrible. You can hear it, but it sounds terrible. So there's a problem with the right channel, and there's also a global problem that's very likely the relay. So we have at least two issues. Let's start by taking the cover off. This unit is rated at 50 watts of continuous power into 8 ohms or 10 amps of continuous current and so the large transformer here is a must. There are two taps off of the second area of the transformer. One is going to supply the positive and negative rail voltages for the amplifier section. The other is going to supply the low voltage for the unit. So it's going to be the voltage for this LED here as well as the coil voltage for the relay. Now as far as work I'm going to start on this power supply board. I'm going to remove and replace all of the electrolytics. They're in good shape, but they're all original and they're 85C rated, so I'll get those replaced. I'm also going to remove, inspect, and clean the contacts of the relay. I can already see through this cover here that the uh, variable contacts are, uh, there's a lot of buildup on those, and so I, I believe that's causing our intermittent dropout issue. This relay is very, very similar to the relay that was in the Carver unit that I recently worked on. It is a Guardian unit, however, it does have a slightly different model number, but I think it's going to be basically the same inside. So I'm going to turn this around. We'll get the service panel off and get to work. All right, here's the relay, and I apologize, but I've already cleaned the contacts, reinstalled it, and tested it, but since it's out of the unit again, you know, there's still a problem, so I believe this relay was actually causing both issues, because momentarily I had both channels sounding just fine. However, when I tapped on the cover, I still got it to drop out intermittently, and so I've already cleaned the contacts really well, really as, as good as I could, so I don't think the cleanliness or the surface um, of the contacts is the issue. I think it's the alignment of the variable contacts with respect to the fixed. So if we look at the variable contacts here in the middle, you can see that uh, with respect to the fixed, it's, it's pretty far off. You can see almost half of the variable contact there. And so really, if it slides out of position like that, which it will after a certain number of actuations, it's, uh, it's hardly making contact. And you can really see it here. It's, uh, it's just not making enough contact, I believe. And so any little disruption, so me tapping on the cover, um, you know, prevented complete contact between the variable and fixed. And I've already looked at the, uh, the way this is mounted. I think it's actually a way that it, it was fabricated. It's a fabrication flaw, um, just a little bit of marginality in the fabrication. So I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this. And uh, just to avoid any future pain, I ordered a new one. I actually found a new one on eBay, and I think this is brand new. It said it was brand new. The cover looks really nice. It's, uh, it's an exact replacement, so I think this should work. If we look at the variable versus fixed alignment, you can see that's exactly what we want, dead center basically. Even if we actuate it, it's, it looks perfect. So I'm gonna get this one installed and then we'll test. Okay, the relay went in just fine, and yes, I did recap the power supply board off camera. I apologize for that. I tested this and the right channel is now working, so the relay was causing that problem, but the left channel still seems to cut out intermittently, so let's check that out. 
So you can hear this is both channels. They sound really great right now. Let me show you just the right channel. Working just fine. Let me show you the left channel. Sounds okay, but I tapped on it again and it'll cut out intermittently. So what I think the problem is there's some sort of connection issue on the board somewhere down here. So we have our, of course our relay right here and we have our output from the power supply board to each channel. The red wire is the right channel, the blue is the left. So watch what happens if I manipulate the blue wire. There you go. So I'm not doing much there at all and it cut out completely. Depending on where that sits, it cuts in and out. So I think at a minimum there's a problem with this connection. It could be the wire to the, to the post here or it could be the post soldered to the board. Let's zoom in and inspect that a little further. Okay, I've been chasing the left output wire, this blue wire here for quite a while, and it certainly seemed like as I manipulated it, it was cutting in and out, but that is not the issue. Let me show you what I found. All right, here are all four speaker binding posts. The right channel is in the red and the black, and the left channel is in the blue and the black, and maybe you can already see the issue. It's not the positive signal, it's this negative signal right here, this, this uh, negative lead is not even soldered on to the binding post and so I'm doing a bad job of showing you there you go you can see it's yeah look at that <laughs> it's not soldered on at all it's just sliding up and down the binding post so that's definitely going to be our intermittent issue with the left channel um, I'm not positive but it certainly seems like this has been this way from the factory it doesn't look like there's been any solder on there at all so I think the owner has just gotten lucky that it hasn't cut out you know from the very beginning but Either way, let's get this soldered on and make sure that fixes this issue. It's been resoldered, so let's test it now for stability. So this is left channel only. It sounds pretty good. Let me manipulate both the positive and negative wires to make sure we're still stable. Good on the positive. Let me try the negative. Good there as well. Sounds all good. Let's make sure the right channel still sounds okay. Sounds great. So technically this repair is complete. Everything is working as it should. I've recapped the power supply board, replaced the relay, soldered the left channel's ground connection to the speaker binding post, but we can't call this complete without finishing the recap. So I will be recapping the amplifier board. I have all of those caps. Depending on the age, sometimes I will remove and replace the thermal compound behind the heatsink mounted transistors, but I've already checked this. There's plenty of thermal compound on all four transistors, actually all six, and uh, it's in really good shape. It's not brittle or dry. So I'm gonna leave that the way it is those are working really, really well, so I'm not going to touch those. I'm just going to finish by recapping the amplifier section. The amplifier section has been recapped, so this one is completely done. Let's do the final sound test. This sounds great. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you soon.